Hi, I'm Lily. Welcome to my channel. Today we'll be doing the last zebra in this zebra sketchbook spread that I've so far posted two videos on. This will be the third one. And we're I'm going to show you how I painted this little watercolor sunset silhouette zebra landscape. So let's get started. This is what we've done so far and I'm just putting this paper here so I don't smudge it. And as we're going here, I'm going to just fill up this top part with the this next watercolor slash sketch. And before I start drawing this page, I just wanted to flip back to show you this elephant spread, so like the silhouette with the sunset in the background, kind of what we're going for again here. So first I'm just going to kind of visualize here what I want. I think we're going to put an umbrella tree here in this left corner, not quite like I see in the picture. I kind of want a shorter one with a lot more broad canopy. So I'm, the first step I guess is just going to be starting to sketch that in and then I'm thinking about having two or three other zebras off to the right to fill in this landscape. So then I'm going to start on this first zebra outline, just kind of using some of the silhouettes that I'm seeing in the back of the reference photo just to get the general gist of what they might look like, I'm trying to stay kind of light so that way I can go back and change it. So erasing some and it's hard because they're so tiny to get a lot of details in. Um, so mine right now looks like it has a really big head, but I think like for me, what I'm most excited about this is just to you know, get some like dramatic contrast between the black silhouette and the sunset. So I might not spend as much time trying to get proportions right on these back zebras as I normally would. And then this one, I'm going to try a little different approach, actually trying to look for the shapes instead of just doing an outline to see if that might help it come out better. And I'm going to start out smaller too because the other one looks a little bit, a little bit bigger, like thicker than I was would have wanted for the size that it should be. Maybe if I can try picking up some. I think the head is just still too big. It's <laughs> my main problem. Um, let's see if I can get that a little smaller. Knowing that I'm also going to be limited by you know, like how small I can get in there with my watercolor as well. I don't want to make them so small. But overall, I just have really enjoyed working on this piece. Just, you know, like not really expecting too much of myself, and just having fun with capturing these animals in my sketchbook. And I love doing watercolor and everything, but sometimes it's really nice not to have to think about picking the right colors to match, you know, somewhat realistically. Some, it's, I really enjoy just doing, just using my pencils, like my graphite pencils and having it just be a black and white, just paying attention to the values, lights and darks, and still capturing the likeness that way. And then it's like kind of having this treat at the end of knowing that I'll get to put a splash of color in when it's all said and done, but I really hope you guys have had fun with this spread as well and if you haven't um, seen it I also did a similar layout with elephants if you enjoyed this one please go check that out too um, I'm gonna pull my watercolors here lighten up everything again just so less chance that the pencil lines will show through and I'm just using a orangish reddish paint here and one thing I want to be conscious about is just not getting things ridiculously dark around these other silhouettes you know how I want an even sunset with like maybe a little bit more vibrant colors towards the horizon but so in order to do that I'm just going to kind of paint through the trees and then put the black lines on top otherwise if you're outlining a shape the paint tends to like pool there and then you get 
it doesn't look quite as even. And I don't know if I've mentioned this yet or not, but this is just like a, I don't know, like, I don't even know if it's multimedia sketchbook or I think it's, it's probably so, yeah, I think it's just for, it's supposed to be just for dry media, so I cheat and I use it for watercolor a lot, but the watercolor doesn't behave super well as you can kind of, like see if I, I can't even get the paper wet because it'll wrinkle bad so then like when I paint larger areas like this it gets kind of scratchy so um, yeah I get, that's just the material that I'm working with like I said it's just it's just a sketchbook so I'm not super super worried about that but if yeah I guess I just wanted to kind of explain a little bit of the obstacles I'm working with here so that you might be able to do like a little bit more with this if you want to like create some sort of ombre effect with or put like the sun in. I just know that I'm a little bit limited with blending out the watercolors just because of my paper type but I still love this sketchbook anyways. It's just I'm just not using it for what it's meant to be so it's my fault not its fault. And at this point like my orange is getting kind of a little bit like washed out so I really want to make sure that it stays bright and vibrant and cheery rather than kind of like, I don't know, muddly. So this watercolor set actually I got from Walmart for like $10 I think it was and or maybe it was $15 i am not sure it wasn't a lot and I just, I just had so much fun with it because it's like travel size and this water brush is just very versatile, I guess. Um, it's a little hard because if you have a lot of water in it, the water will continue just a week out, which can sometimes take away some of your control with how consistent your paint is, like the consistency of the paint. But I love it because like you can cover large areas and like it has, you can get such a fine tip on it as well, even though it's like a largish brush. And I'm, I mean, like I'm not looking for any super fancy quality in my watercolors, but it's like I've been impressed with all of the paint quality so far. So I let that layer dry for a little bit and I'm coming back now and just kind of like looking at the piece as a whole without my little protection sheet just because it's, you know, kind of fun just to see how kind of progress checks, I guess. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to be using the, the black paint now since I'm pretty happy with the coloring of the orange. If you want to put another layer down for the sunset, you know, go ahead, like make it however detailed or colorful as you want. But I think for what I'm looking for, this is good for me. I kind of want to finish this today, so I don't really have time to put another layer on. Um, but I'm just going to put start by putting the whole grassland down um, as the bottom to also kind of help frame, I think, the watercolor portion of this sketch. And what I'm going to be paying attention to is just making sure that I always really have my brush saturated with pigment so that way it doesn't start getting like a grayish watercolor since also, you know, we all know that um, watercolor, it lightens when it dries. So I want to make sure that it's still going to be, I don't know, can, can black be vibrant, but I want to make sure it's still going to be vibrant, um, rich. I, I don't know what the right word is. I just want to make sure it's still actually black. Um, when it's dry so like right now here you can see it's getting a little bit gray more gray than black I was hoping so I'm just gonna put in some more pigment here and along the edges of the tree I just I don't want it to you know just be tree and then sky so if you if you wanted to like just put a couple like little leaves so you can see where it, it gradually comes to the edge of the canopy I'm gonna have fun putting in a lot of branches. I didn't really look up any additional reference photos. I probably should have, um, so I don't really know if they have this many branches. But I mean, it's my sketchbook, right? So I guess I'm just gonna have fun putting in a bunch of, um, bunch of branches going out. I feel like it's kind of, it's kind of giving me more like mangrove vibes than an umbrella tree, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it looks when we're all done. And like, I think, to me, like, 
umbrella trees, like they don't really have that much of like an actual like vertical trunk here. So I actually even might put in some more branches even so it doesn't look so like the, the branches aren't so high up off the ground. Like I said, I don't actually know what they look like. I could probably look up some more references compared to this just these two that I have. I don't I think these don't these don't even look like umbrella trees, but I like umbrella trees, so I'm going to put those in. And So, sorry, I had to kind of block the screen there a little bit, but I'm just still working on just putting those other like lower branches in. Um, I kind of went off of the, the page a little bit here, so my tree is um, a little bit bare on that far side, so it's, I probably should expect the canopy a little bit. And then also just kind of make sure, like I say, that this tree is actually going to be black, not gray. So I'm going to also go back over just with another layer of the black, just to make sure that it doesn't start looking watered out or, yeah, gray, I guess. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> I just don't want it to be gray. And I really like those last couple of leaves I put on the top. I think that gave the tree a new shape. But I'm happy enough with that. So I'm gonna let that dry and see what that final values are. And I'm gonna start blocking in the zebras. Um, I don't know, I'm not super impressed with how these silhouettes came out, but I think they'll still end up being cute. Um, since the legs are gonna be so small, I pretty much just painted right through them, similar to like what I was doing with the tree trunks. And then I'm just gonna make, put the black on top just to make sure that there's not some dead white space which is actually kind of what happened in the tree a little bit you can see it a few places in between the branches where I had left too much room for my trunk um, I put I just put I tried to put the like a little mane on the zebra and I think that I don't know it looks more like a mohawk or something more than like a zebra mane <laughs> but just like this is what I'm talking about. Like, see how like thin of lines this brush can make? I'm just, I'm all just so impressed with this this brush. I love it so much. Like you can really do a lot of really fine detail work, and then also cover. It's just like, yeah. I don't know, very versatile. I'm impressed with it. I honestly haven't used like one of my normal brushes for for most for most of my work actually. So, I mean, there's the basis for everyone. So to finish this up, I want to put another layer of the black on for sure, and I'm toying with probably actually going back in again with the orange, just, I would like it maybe more colorful than it, it currently is, so I think I, I think I might, but I'm going to go with the black and um, just making sure that I, I I'm trying trying to touch up the zebras but trying to make sure that I'm not I don't accidentally go outside of the line because they're already on a little bit of the chunky side so I don't want um, I don't I don't want to accidentally make them bigger and then have to like kind of you'll carry a mistake through and up the size of them again because they really they I don't want them any bigger than they currently are like I'm tempted to put like a tail or something but um, I just I don't I don't want to do that and have something go wrong and then I have to like kind of check, you know, like fill it in and then all of a sudden I have absolutely huge zebras. So, I don't know. Um, please share how yours turned out because um, I'm very interested. Um, I'm tempted to try this again to maybe spend a little bit more time on it. I think I was definitely rushing this, their sketches because I was like, oh, like it's just going to be a very small silhouette. Like how much detail does it really need, and I probably should have spent more time. So I picked up some more of the orange, like I was saying, and I'm just gonna fill in the bottom here because I'm imagining like the sun is like right just going down, so it's gonna. I want the orange near the horizon, especially, to be the most vibrant. And it was, I just wasn't wasn't quite happy. So I'm gonna take a little bit of time and. Like I said, be extra careful not to like smear, um, smear in some of the black, but just go back through and add the orange. So 
I'm just gonna take a look, step back and kind of look at the picture as a whole. And I'm, there's a little bit more white space here in between the zebras than I would like um, for, and to make it more cohesive. So I might go in and add some grass to it, but I don't know, like just comparing it to this elephant one, I had really used up the whole paper here and I would like to be able to match that with the zebras too. So this is what I had ended up finally doing. I was doing this a, diff a different day and I didn't have my recording stuff easy accessible. So I just put in like a couple little grass fronds or I don't know what you call them, but I really like how it, it turned out. It was really simple. Like I just put a couple straight lines and then like hash marked um, the ends of like kind of to make, give it like that weedy look. So feel free to add that or not, but otherwise, yeah, it, it's done.